Today's video is about new strategies to increase website conversion. Yep. But before we talk about those, um, can you tell us a little bit about the, some of the traditional strategies that companies have used or digital marketing teams have used? Yeah, so when you're talking about strategies to improve conversion on a website, there are different maturity levels. So when I talk about old strategies and new strategies, these are a little bit advanced to even what other organizations are doing. Some organizations don't have any strategy to improve website conversions. The old strategy is a bit siloed. So when you talk about silo, that means every unit of the organization is doing optimization in isolation of other channel. Say, for example, advertising acquisition is doing optimization in a silo content is doing um, optimization in a silo. So that's the old way of doing optimization. And I've seen this in different types of organizations. Most marketing teams are formed organically. There is no strategy into creating and designing marketing teams because this is done in silos and organizations are structured differently. A good example is where you have analytics team in a different team, and then you have acquisition team in a different team, you have CRO in a different team, UX in a different department. The customer journey is not linear, but the customer journey, all these teams work in silo in an old model. So that creates problem because each person within the organization doesn't have an understanding how every touch point connects. So the old way of optimizing conversion on a website is you have people who just do analytics audit, they get data. And then after analytics audit, then they do like usability testing. The usability testing that they do is not frequent it's like very infrequent i've seen organizations that will do usability testing once a year sometimes once in two years and that's the expectation is for conversion to improve that is a problem and then you have a situation where organizations will have landing page designs without actual ux people being involved ux ui to actually help you design a landing page when you're about to take it into testing so this old way of optimizing a website is a situation where the cro function is separate from the ux function in some instances the ux function is not existent in the organization so that's a problem and then the old way of trying to do optimization on a website is where you have situations where A-B testing becomes a metric. So it's not about increasing sales in some instances. It then becomes about how many tests are we able to push. Different organization, would they approach A-B testing like it's primarily about numbers. In this instance, it's like, oh, we're able to launch 10 tests per month. We're able to, in this year, we're able to launch 30 tests. So that is a old way of improving conversions. And then you say, oh, we have X amount of conversion uplift. That doesn't really show correlating increase in revenue or in actual sales or in footfall to the offline stores. So that's like a disjointed approach of CRO. So it sounds like it's more about the quantity of different activities that are being done rather than the quality and the, the effect that those correct, activities correct. have. Organizations that are doing all these things that I've mentioned, that is the old way, they're still advanced than some organizations that are not doing optimization at all. So the metric is more about the volume of work you're doing rather than the quality of work you're doing. So you have situations where we're launching 10 tests, we're launching 10 personalization per month, but there's no, when you ask the question, what is the revenue impact of all this test? What is the actual footfall impact? The question becomes a difficult question to answer. So those are organizations that are not mature when it comes to 
optimization and increase in website conversion. So what are these new strategies that can increase website conversion that you're referring to? Different organizations are structured differently. The best in class organization have a customer experience focus. So conversion optimization and website optimization strategies, they approach it not in a siloed manner, as I mentioned earlier about the old school way of doing optimization. They approach conversion optimization, they approach website conversion from a journey perspective. So there's a combination of customer experience, customer journey, UX perspective. So they're actually using the voice of the customer to actually encourage conversions. You have situations where organizations would use internal stakeholders as target customers. That is not optimization. That is a recipe for disaster. That encourages groupthink. I've worked in organizations where the end-to-end -end optimization is the focus. So I'll give you an example. Old school optimization approach has very limited stakeholders involved in the whole optimization workflow. And then the new strategic approach to optimization will have acquisition in the room, it will have engagement in the room when it comes to content people. It will have purchase, which which means the actual sales um, conversion. It will have retention, and then it will have referral. All these stakeholders work together as an agile unit, a cross-functional team. So, in organizations where this that have done this in the past will have meetings twice a month and they're called core optimization teams. So with this team, everybody within the team, if, it's a, if, if the organization is like in the legal or comp that you require compliance, you have compliance people in the room as well. So the visibility of the customer journey is what they're looking at. When someone with an understanding of acquisition and an understanding of conversion, we work closely with the acquisition team this has to do with asset optimization. This has to do with SEO, uh, page search, every acquisition channel, even email as an acquisition channel, will come together and we optimize. So acquisition pre-purchase is optimized for conversion. In organizations that don't have so much success, those people don't talk to each other. Customer experience, conversion optimization, don't speak to acquisition. Acquisition is done in isolation. So that bucket needs to be optimized. And that's why I said it's a cross-functional effort. And then you then have the engagement. Because one thing people don't understand is whatever you do in optimization, the quality of your content, the how you communicate your value proposition will determine the success and the increase of conversion that you have. And then when you look at content in most organizations, it's ironic that this part is often outsourced. And this is the most important part. If you look at video content, it's outsourced. You look at image content, it's outsourced. You look at text content, it's often outsourced to an external agency. It's mind boggling when you don't have that specialty, that expertise within the team. That's why I mentioned that in the new structure, your strategy should be having someone that is a content designer that has an appreciation of conversion. And that content needs to be the three pillars of content, not just one, text, image, and video. This individual will work closely with the UX and the CRO person. In situations where you have a UX person designing a landing page or UI person designing a journey. They design that journey in isolation of the content that will exist in those journeys. So you need the engagement person looking at the end to end funnel to see that, okay, what is converting? What content do we, how many co content touch points do we need to give to someone to convert? 
The question is then, okay, people that have converted on your website, what are the type of content? What are the sequence of content they consume before they converted? For repeat purchase, it's the same thing as well. And then you then talk about the conversion optimization side of thing. When you talk about conversion optimization, there's this perception that you just have to follow best practice. Best practice is a recipe for disaster because every organization is different. I've seen organizations that work in a different sector, but they're heavily trying to copy Apple website. It's mind boggling because Apple has a strong brand. How people will behave on their website is totally different to how people will behave on your website. So if you have that situation where there's no understanding that conversion is psychological, there's neuromarketing involved, there is uh, persuasion involved, it's not common sense, there's a science to it. And when you have an organization that doesn't even speak to the customer, you have the brand organization that is doing optimization and everyone involved in optimization have not heard the voice of the customer. I'm talking about actually sitting and listening to how a customer goes through a purchase process. And yet you're spending millions of pounds optimizing a website without having the customer's perspective. So that's the purchase side. And then after the purchase side, then you need to look at, okay, how do you retain these people? Because it's very expensive to acquire a new customer. But getting that customer to repeat the purchase, that means the cost of acquisition reduces. The more time the person or the, your customer comes back for repeat purchase, the lower your cost of acquisition, the more profit you get. So if the customer, if, it's, if you have like a repeat, you have opportunity for people to repeat purchase on your website the more often you can get them to convert on that website the better i have purchased on websites that have patronized the website for over 10 years that makes me a really good customer because they don't have any cost associated to getting me back that's because they've optimized their end-to-end -end journey then after that, then you then look at post-purchase. That's the part that I just mentioned that is the repeat purchase. And then further to post-purchase, you then have referral. That's the word of mouth marketing. That's loyalty. So all this end-to-end -end customer optimization touch point is bigger than A-B testing. And if you go to an organization that does an old approach that is not mature in conversion optimization and increasing conversion on a website, all they're gonna be talking about is A-B testing and personalization. That is not the customer journey. That is not customer experience. So you need to look at it from a customer journey perspective. And then one thing I've seen, I mentioned earlier on is the team structure. For an organization to get an increased conversion on their website, the senior stakeholders, the marketing directors, the CMO, the CEO needs to be deliberate about designing the team. I've seen organizations that have gone through restructuring because they understand that for us to get increased conversion, for us to get the best in class conversion and performance, we need to look at it from a customer journey perspective and this requires a, re a restructure, upskilling the right people within the team. And one problem that I've seen apart from skill level within the team, you can fill that gap by hiring external contractor like myself to come in on a three to six months um, pro project to help you upskill your internal team, to help you look at how you can design the end-to-end -end customer journey and then make sure that the teams are working. I'm not talking about agile marketing here. I'm talking about looking at the customer journey from a funnel perspective, creating a cross collaboration team to optimize those journeys, irrespective of hierarchy, irrespective of reporting line, everyone is working as a unit. So organizations that struggle, struggle because in some instances, the senior stakeholders 
do not understand the importance of scale and structure and workflow towards optimization. If you had to distill it all down to one special rule for conversion, what would that be? It's a mindset thing. So because over the years, I started my career many years ago, I've seen conversion optimization start from an approach that didn't, that didn't embrace UX. And I've seen it embrace UX. I've seen it evolve over the years. But one thing I've seen across multiple clients, multiple sectors that I've done optimization for, it's a mindset thing. If the organization has an understanding that conversion is focused on a customer lifetime value, not just one one of purchases, if they're optimizing for repeat purchase, optimizing for word of mouth, optimizing for customer experience, that is the new strategy of increasing conversion. These, if you look at organizations such as Apple, Microsoft, and all these big organization organizations, Netflix, all these organizations that have they understand how to retain and understand that conversion is looking at the end-to-end -end optimization. Those are the companies that are successful. So in my opinion and in my experience, I've seen results where conversions as high as 12% conversion, but that is based on end-to-end -end optimization. And for it to be sustainable, that is how you approach it. So my name is Femi Olajiga. I'm a conversion optimization consultant, UX, CRO, acquisition, end-to-end -end optimization. So if you need help with increasing conversion on your website, reach out to me and I'll be glad to help. Thank you.